On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. The build-up's certainly different, you know, not being amongst the, the atmosphere, the hype, you know, being around our fans in Melbourne. Not that it feels like a home and away season because we the expectation, the stakes are uh, a lot higher and the, the playing group understand that. But, yeah, just, just not having that uh, or being exposed to the excitement and atmosphere of finals and particularly a prelim is something that is lacking. That's an exciting time for the footy club. I'm a little bit nervous at the moment, but I think it's a good time to start getting nervous. You know, the way we've sort of had the last two weeks has been good the first First week was sort of just relaxing time, focus on your recovery, sleep, not doing too much about footy, real low level stuff. But uh, the last week has been really, really good. We've ramped it up. Uh, we've got our education back. And, and yeah, it's, it's been an exciting time for the footy club and um, for our fans. The resort life, we're very enclosed here and there's not much you can do. I mean, people are walking the car park continuously. Goody's done about, I think he's up to about a thousand laps in nine days. But um, now the sense of footy is back and the sense of normality is back in our week and focusing on Geelong, we know who we're playing and that gives us a lot to do. Oh, I think as a coach, you're always losing sleep. They're hard games to get to and you work incredibly hard to get to the position you're in and um, now it's about really maximising your opportunities. So, you know, as a coach, you want to make sure you get everything right in place. You know, your team's in a good mindset and, and you're ready to go. And you know, we certainly feel as a footy club, we've, we've got a lot of pieces in the right places and we feel well prepared, but that doesn't mean you sleep any better. You know, things happen in games and you need a little bit of luck. Viney, Petrarca, Gorn and Goodwin, your leaders. Give us a feel for the Melbourne Nation on this Wednesday morning, 0433 98 11 16. We'll go straight to your leader, shall we? The Chief Executive, Gary Pert over in Perth. Gary, great to have you back on the program. Hey, Jared. What's your sense of, of your demon nation a couple of days out from a prelim? Well, you know, over here in Perth, I think the the players and coaches are in really good shape. You know, we've had a couple of weeks. Um, the first week, you know, we was very much about recovery physically and psychologically, but it is starting to ramp up this week, and we've had a couple of big sessions to make sure everyone's in uh, a good place, and they seem to be. But as you know, we've we've talked about it quite a bit. As a total club, um, it is very difficult to you know, get your head around the fact that we're not able to be sharing with this, uh, with our supporters and members in the same way. We'd we'd love to be at the MCG, but you nearly have to put that out of your mind. It's yeah. Just stay focused on the reality of what we're dealing with right at the moment. Because it's not hard to imagine, Gary, is it what Friday night would be with Melbourne and Geelong, given the, the ancient rivalry and, and what that would look like in a prelim? Oh, look, I think the whole season, you know, we've been on top of the ladder a big part of the season and we've uh, they would have been blockbuster games and then the first final would have been a, a huge crowd and, you know, in Melbourne with the majority of the supporters being Melbourne people. They're certainly, our supporters are certainly up and about and they're swamping us with messages and emails and letters. It's been fantastic. So, but as we talked about, if you focus on that, it can it can be de-energising because it is frustrating. Um, so very much we look at it and go, the best thing we can do for our supporters is keep on winning, playing a style of footy that they're proud of, and so that becomes our focus. What sort of stories are you hearing from, from your long-timers back in Melbourne, Gary? Because... Uh, you've shared with us before that the emails that you get and the time you take to absorb what they're experiencing. What, what are they experiencing to your eye now? Oh, this, you know, it's a very emotional time. And, you know, I don't think I've seen communications uh, in all my time in footy where a lot of people are saying, you know, this is during during the shutdown where we have so many people feeling isolated, the way they're expressing the importance of the club over the last six months in helping them deal with the challenges they're experiencing in life and how important that is. You know, grown men admitting that they're they're crying after games and supporters saying this is the best they've felt in 30, 40 years of supporting the club. It seems to be a very emotional time and we pass a lot of that on to the players and, and they need to be in touch in who they're representing every time they go out to play. So um, uh, we understand, and and at the same time, we need to be 
very realistic and very focused on the fact that every game you play in the finals, including this weekend, you're up against um, highly talented teams that are, uh, you know, we've got the highest respect for a team like Geelong and we know it's going to be a huge battle. Um, but, you know, we, we feel that if we play our best on the day, we can do what our supporters are hoping we can do. And in the correspondence, Gary, have you heard stories from Melbourne fans exploring quarantine or repatriation or, or anything? Just to, It seems impossible this year. I know there were Richmond fans who got out through Darwin to be in Brisbane last year. Have you come across any creatives that, that were possible? <laughs> Early on, I got a lot of communications on how people were going to get over here. Unfortunately, um, I do like to respond to as many of the communications as possible. And I did have to advise people it is different this year. The, the West Australian government made it very clear they're not going to be allowing anyone in. They don't want Melbourne-based supporters in here. And it was going to be impossible. And that's exactly how it's um, played out. Um, but everyone was trying to work out some sort of plan that no one else had ever thought of. Yes. But as it's worked out. Um, but we've also got to keep in mind that we've got a really strong, passionate supporter base here. It'll only be a 1,000 or maybe 2,000 uh, people who are the Western Demons that are really great supporters. So we'll look to engage with them as soon as we get out of isolation. And the other thing we're being really swamped with over here, which is nice, is so many people in West Australia have... Um, have adopted us for this uh, finals period because their teams aren't in it and they're sending us communications. Can we get a flag? Can we get a cap? We love what you guys are doing. We were right behind you. And these aren't Melbourne supporters, but I just think they want to see us do well. And I don't have any doubt we're actually going to have a lot of support um, this weekend. And, and a lot of it will be from West Australian people that have just jumped on board and uh, want to be part of our journey at the moment. What was the initiative that you announced, Gary, yesterday where the WA Demons members sort of almost literally carrying on their hearts those who can't be here? Yeah, that's right. So we've got so many supporters in Melbourne that would love to be here, and, and West Australians were saying, if you want to represent our supporters in Melbourne, let us know. We'll get their names. We'll send it across, and you can wear their name uh, on a badge at the ground. Um, we, you know, we're doing a lot. We'll be lighting up the ground in red and blue and the walkway across the river. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a bus that we've signed up that'll come through the city in red and blue and we're calling it the bandwagon bus and, and Melbourne people that are going to the game uh, can book and jump on that bus to get here. We're shipping over as many flags and caps and blue and red, really anything, to get it over here and for people to take to the game. So... We really want to make it feel as much as possible as a, a big support, nearly like a home game for us. And it, it feels like it's going to play out that way. And it's been lovely to see Ron Barassi on the various news services back here, Gary. Sort of, uh, he holds the candle for Melbourne. I, I suspect you sent him a care package of all the latest merchandise to, to, to carry the torch. Yeah, look, we, we all love Ron and he's, He's just amazing. He comes to every game. He comes to every function. Um, and he, he's just a great supporter. And he always has beautiful words to tell to the players and the coaches before big games. And uh, we're in constant communication. And, and let's face it, we'd love him to be here as part of all the games here. But it's impossible. He knows that. And he's been sending messages. And you're right. We've been sending uh, Melbourne packs to all our you know, key people around the club because we understand how frustrating it is that they can't be here. But we want to know that uh, they're still loved, they're still connected to the journey we're on and we want them to feel proud of everything we're doing at the moment. We're getting some great messages pouring through, Gary, from the, the Demon Nation as we chat. And one says, there is no Demon's gear available to buy in Perth. It's completely sold out. You had to be early on the uptake. <laughs> Yeah, and look, we're, we're doing numbers in our retail. Like, uh, I think we've reordered four or five times most of that. Um, and our manufacturers are continuing uh, on that scale. But we're certainly selling our, our merchandise at a rate that we literally have never, ever done before. 
Um, our membership's been a bit the same. We've sort of got to a point where we'll finish the year at 55,000 members. And, and that's an amazing part of us stepping and becoming the club we want to be. And, and again, I, I don't want to harp on the frustration of this year and, and not being able to have supporters at all our big games this year. But if we, we need to see this as something that we need to carry through for three, four, five, six years if we want to grow and be the club um, that we, we have in our visions. And so this year is great, but uh, hopefully next year and the year after we'll get a chance to be performing at the MCG in front of all those passionate supporters that have just been so patient and so amazing this year. Part of the journey of those fans, Gary, is when they fully embraced the idea that uh, this was not just a, a source of optimism, but that, but something that you could believe in and have confidence in. I just wonder, from your perspective, living it right at the coalface, were there moments in the season where you went, OK, we are a legit top side here, rather than just having a good phase? Yeah, look, I, I talked to you at the start of the year and to your listeners about the fact we did the review at the end of last year and... and Part of that review was identifying we, we've just got this amazingly talented list and we need we needed to make some changes around that list to support it in terms of the coaching and the and the leadership of the program. But we always had confidence in what they were capable of doing. And then as the year went on, when you start beating, which which we did when you start beating the top four teams, and we knew we'd have to get to that point. Then all of a sudden you go, we're not only beating them, but we're clearly playing a style of football that would hold up in finals. And that, that was our, that's what it, where our stated goal was at the start of the year. Be back in the finals, but most importantly, playing a style of football that would actually hold up in the finals and beat the top teams. And I think we've shown that this year. And when we started to do that during the year, um, you know, I knew if we could keep our players fit and the uh, the program in place, we'd be right up there at the end of the year. And we've had an amazing run with injuries. We've largely kept, kept our player group fit. And it uh, puts us in a pretty good place at the moment. How significant was the Round 23 game after the siren to claim a minor premiership? We know all the history surrounding that as well in, in that in that journey to believe. Um, well, I think it was important, and I'm saying for the whole club. I, I think for supporters, I think nearly in the footy world, for us to finish the year as the minor premiers, you, you then couldn't you couldn't doubt that we were a serious contender. And and again, the way we did it, nearly uh, maximised the emotional impact of that as well. And you saw the player group. Um, rest assured in the rooms with the coaches and all the staff, we were we were just as excited. But I, I think the whole club nearly exploded emotionally at that point. Yep. The yep. excitement finished on top. We're going in the finals. And it nearly went from, this is exciting, we're going to make the finals, to so many people going, "This I'm really, as hard as this is to admit, I think that, we're capable of beating any team in it and um, that's carried all the way through. So these have all been part of the journey for everyone and I think we all know that if you go back historically with the Melbourne Footy Club, you can pretty quickly find some scar tissue back there that, that people like to constantly bring up. Now the focus is just on the exciting opportunity that's ahead of us and um, we, we've got to pull it all together and make it happen on the day but... Uh, Again, we've got all the um, the fundamental ingredients there. And the job that Simon Goodwin has done, I noticed today there's the, the start of, of reports as to yeah. when when and how you might go about the process of, of re-signing him through to... So he's contracted to the end of next year and he's done the job magnificently for you this year after the, the review that you conducted. What What is your, your approach to that? Well, firstly, I want to just say, like, Goody's coaching, I think, uh, has been magnificent this year. And I think he's surrounded by a really good team that is... Uh, because I tend to look at the coaching team rather than any particular individual. Um, and I think 
you know, Adam Uze and Chopio Williams coming into the mix with Alan Richardson and and um, Troy Chaplin and Greg Stafford as a, as a coaching group. I'm watching them, the way they perform, the way they handle the big moments, the way they prepare for games. And it is a bit chalk and cheese from last year. I think they're just in really good form as a coaching group themselves. In regards to recontracting uh, Goody, um, it's probably the last thing on our mind for any of us. We're, we're on this roller coaster of just getting through each day. Um, it's things like it's a daily thing for us not to even know where we're going to be training or, or things being changed by the AFL or these changing dynamics. Any of that sort of planning stuff for next year, we'll, we'll deal with it when we've got time. But uh, right at the moment, we're just 100% focus, focused on setting ourselves for the weekend and, and trying to stay in the mix and give ourselves another two weeks to uh, prepare after that. Gary, the one pure footy question is, has Joel Smith strained his hamstring and is he out of Friday night? Um, so I think we, we had a pretty uh, a big session yesterday and everyone got through it really well. But uh, um, I, I do know that they'll be just looking at Smitty's leg. The one thing that we can do, because we've had a, uh, a couple of weeks in preparation, is you can afford to be pretty conservative with any sort of sore spots with players. Um, so anyone that's feeling any sort of discomfort, we've taken off and, and looked after. So, uh, you know, at this, this stage, it's still pretty early in the week. They'll just have to look at him, see if it uh, settles down, and um, we'll see how it plays out. But we, we don't have a view either way. Um, the good thing is he's, he's the only one with a question mark on, at the moment, everyone else is fighting fit and ready to go. How do you reckon you'll go as a, a spectator on uh, in a preliminary final? So you've had a little bit of experience of it, a lot of experience at, at, at Collingwood, and now here you are as the chief executive of the team in a prelim. Will you brace yourself for the night? Oh, yeah, look, I, to be quite honest, I find it really difficult because I'm sitting there, I'm I'm part of it, I know what this means to so many people around the club, the supporters, the players, yet you're sitting there and you can't do anything about it. The, the players and coaches have got the easy part because they can actually do something about <laughs> what's happening on the ground. The rest of us just sit there and uh, be nervous and and just have to uh, deal with it and watch it. So, yeah, I must admit, I wouldn't say I enjoy those big games and I, I, I won't enjoy it on the weekend uh, you know, it it is a bit of a nerve wracking time, and and again, there's just I just know emotionally how important this is to so many people. Um, you're just constantly thinking of that. Gary, it's great to catch up at such a moment. Thanks a lot for taking the call. Great, thanks, Jared. Good on you, Gary Pert, the chief executive of Melbourne. So that's how the the demon nation feels at the top.